we have experienced is what I've been praying for. And even on a, on a day like today, when I realize that there's tired bodies among us, present company included. However, I believe also that those of us that are here, we've been appointed to be here this morning. Ah, glory. We, we've been appointed to be here this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What we've just experienced is just a demonstration of his word before his word has been preached. Because, well, I'm going to tell you all, like Bishop Hatcher said the other night, I was hoping I would have some time I would have an opportunity to use this. Will y'all please sit down because it's impolite to stand up when somebody else is speaking. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. How did he expect for us to sit down the way he was preaching? Let me, let me just read this verse of Scripture, and then I'm not going to, you know, this is the first time in I don't know how long that I actually sat at my computer, and I typed, and I typed, and I typed, and I wanted to make certain that I didn't forget anything, Sister Pat, so I got it all up in there, and, and, and look at this, right now, the Spirit of the Lord said, yeah, <laughs> thank you, Lord, <laughs> thank you, Lord, but in Galatians chapter 2, and 20, if you have your Bibles, uh, you don't even have to stand. I just want to read this to you. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Okay, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm crucified. I've, I've been... I've been hung on a cross. I've, I've my 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 flesh has been abused, and and you know I I've I've sacrificed. I've I'm, I've become that living sacrifice that Paul talks about in Romans chapter twelve. I've been crucified with Christ. Yet I live. I live. I live. Oh, glory to God, man. I wish I, was, I didn't get to see you running around the bases yesterday, but I got to see you run around the sanctuary this morning. Thank you, Lord. You must have hit that one out the park, brother, because you, you, yeah, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. So he says, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And this is so critical. Amen. We cannot live this life unless the life of Christ is alive in us. The spirit of Christ, the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead must dwell in us. Quicken our mortal bodies. It is absolutely necessary for that to happen. <coughs> and this week, this past week, while I was out doing some yard work, amen, and the Spirit of the Lord told me that he was getting ready to reinvent the ministry. But it comes with a price. It comes with a price. And the price that it comes with is that the, that leadership is going to have to be reinvented. Amen. All those who, who say they, they saved, who, who say they want to be a part of kingdom building, all of us, we're going to have to be reinvented. That's why the demonstration that we had this morning was necessary. Amen. Because it doesn't matter how much work you put into a thing, if God is not in it, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So he says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, listen to this, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live it by the faith. By the faith, not my faith, 
but I live it by the faith of the Son of God. Oh, my, my. In other words, we are products of Jesus' faith. Now, maybe you don't understand that, but that's been my, test, my lifelong testimony, that I'm a product of my father's faith. If my father had not turned his face to the wall and say, God, I cannot leave my family in 1950 when the doctors told him he only had hours to live, amen, because of the cancer that it was in his body that there was no treatment for in 1950, amen, I would not be standing here today. So I understand what it means to be the product of faith. And the, so the gospel is, the, is telling us the, in Galatians that we live this life that we live because of the faith of Jesus Christ. Because him, of his faith, he knew that if he denied himself, remember when he was in the garden and he said, Father, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He knew that if he complied with the will of God and went to the cross, that you and I would have a right to the, to the tree of life and we would live, 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 live. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Thank you, Lord. So now, with that being said, it's incumbent upon us to live this life. Live it. L live it. I don't mean live it luxuriously. I don't mean live it when you hear the expression, oh, go ahead and live, 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 the, live your life, live your life. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's got nothing to do with materialism. It's, it's got nothing to do with success. It's, it's got nothing to do with, with all the accolades that you can garner for yourself. Amen. But it's about living the life that God has ordained for you to live so that he can be glorified, so that the kingdom can be advanced. Amen. So that souls can come to know who Jesus is. Live the life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But see, in order to live the life, there's some things that you need to know. I had three occurrences on this week, amen, that, that really showed me, amen, that what we experienced this morning is something that we can experience every day. Again, I'm out doing some yard work on this week. And my wife comes to me and she says that she's getting ready to go over to the Swansons and she's wanted to take Brother Wayne a case of Perrier water because he likes Perrier water. And I said, yeah. And so I didn't even think about it when she says, I want to take him a case. Is it okay? I said, take two. And so she took two cases of Perrier over to Brother Wayne. And when she got there, she said, Brother Wayne, she says, I got some Perrier water for you. He says, you got two? And she says, well, I was, I, I was coming with one, but my husband said, take two. Then there was a second occurrence. And the second occurrence, uh, she was having some, some work done. Amen. She was having some alterations done on, on the gown that she wants to wear on Saturday. And, and so she came to me. She says, you know what? This, this person is not even charging me for the the alterations that want to be done. And in my mind, I said $50. And she said, but I want to give her $50. Now, in both of those situations, there was no open communication or discussion. Just like this morning, when I called out and I said, let's do tributes, bless the Lord, they didn't know. And Sister Jackie had already forewarned us that her voice is tired, so we can't do nothing strenuous or high. And I knew that particular song after we started singing, ooh, ooh it's going to be a little on the high side. Okay? But we fell right in. And, and we were blessed by it. Okay? Then there was a third occurrence. And I'm getting ready to show you something. You, you got to pay attention. Pay attention. On the third occurrence, Thursday night, I was sitting there 
My wife was over there on that side. And, and Bishop uh, White was, was preaching a dynamic word. And, in my, and I knew I needed to get up, and I was debating, do I walk across the front or do I go around because I want to be where my wife is? So I got up and I walked around, and I tapped her on the shoulder and I said, come out. As soon as she came out, I grabbed her hand, and he said, all leaders in whatever area of ministry you are, come to the altar. We were able to walk to the altar together. As soon as I grabbed her, as soon as she stepped out in the aisle, I grabbed her hand. He said, all come. Now, if I had not done that, we would have been separated. Or I would have had to struggle because immediately the altar was crowded. However, I need you to understand something, and I'm being transparent with you this morning. Because just hours before that, we had a little disagreement when we both weren't in the same headspace. But it was imperative for me, amen, for us, that before we left home, we got that thing together. Because, hallelujah, because when you come together with God, what the Lord says, if two or three can touch and agree, see, we've got to learn how to resolve our differences swiftly because we never know when the Lord is going to move. Oh, my, my, my. And am I touching you or you touching me and agreeing with one another is going to be contingent upon our being able to, to, to look each other in the eye and say I love you with sincerity of heart. Thank you, Lord. So those, those, each one of those occurrences, again, helped me to, for, for where I am right now this morning and what I'm conveying to you is that it's important for us to recognize that we are products of our environment. We are products of the faith of Christ, yes, but we are also products of our environment. And when I speak of our environment, I'm not talking about a locale. No, I'm talking about a state of mind. What is it that you are thinking on? What is it that you are feeding your soul? What is it that you are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis? Amen. Because look at this. Truth be told, truth be told, if you would stop and take an inventory of where your mind is even now, most of us would have to say, Lord, I repent. L let, me get, let me get this thing straight. See, you'll take a break for a moment to come to church. But as soon as I say amen and as, <laughs> as we go, then you're going to go, you going to go right back to where you came from. You're going to go right back to whatever thought that you were dealing with before you came here. You're going to go right back to that same old dark, wicked, and evil place, amen, where God cannot be found. And then you find yourself asking yourself, why am I going through? Why am I dealing with this Thing over and over and over and over again. The reason why is because you have not yet learned how to let go. Lord gave me another word for you this morning. You must let go of what you have become that you might become what it is that God has called you to be. You must let go. The pain, the hurt, the suffering that has shaped your character, you've got to let go of those things because God has a better place for you. But you can't go because you find yourself ending up in that same old place every time. 
Amen. Amen. It's like you're, you're tethered to the hurt. You're tethered to the, and when I was, when I was writing this on this week, and I thought that word tethered, that God just dropped it in my spirit. Amen. I, I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm one guy that loved to play tetherball when I was young. Anybody know what tetherball is? You don't know what tetherball is. Uh, you gotta be, I guess you got to be a Californian to play tetherball, right? <laughs> tetherball is a game where there's a pole in the ground. And at the top of the pole is a rope. It's a, the rope is about maybe eight feet long. And at the end of the rope is a ball. It's like a volleyball, but it won't come off. It's tethered to the pole by way of the rope. I stand on one side, and you stand on the other. And we hit it to try to make it wrap around the pole. But, but it's your, it's your uh, obligation to block it or to be creative enough to cause it to, when I hit it, to go over my head so I can't get to it. And as it gets closer to the pole, amen, it gets faster and faster until it exits, and then that's the winner. And so what happens is, look, look at this. You are going through life, and you're going round and round. And when it looks like you're almost ready to be, break free, amen, that, that thing that you're tethered to causes you to come right back to where it is. It's, isn't it amazing how that, you know, just think of the analogy of how that the enemy will allow you to get out on a limb as far as he wants you to go. And then when you look back, you see him sawing the limb. And that's how many of us have lived our lives. And that causes us to go right back to the place, amen, that we are familiar with, amen, that will only provide us with comfort for a moment just long enough to catch our breath and realize that we're right back where we started from. I had a situation, amen, uh, an, an encounter rather. It was not my situation. It was, I had an encounter, amen, with, uh, with someone who was dealing with a bad partner relationship. Bad partner. Matter of fact, it was, it was here at the church. It was, it was so bad that the police were called, and while she was waiting for the police to come, this partner of hers called on the phone, and some of the, some of the expletives and, that he was using over the, that I could hear, and I'm thinking to myself, why? Why? And I, I'm going to, let me just say it this way, and I know this happens often. So I should not even question it. But I know it happens often. And, and at some point, God is going to give us an opportunity to share, especially, especially with single women that have found themselves in bad relationships and can't let go. Why do, why do we allow ourselves to be emotionally abused? over and over again and keep going back to the same old thing when you know, as my, as my wife would say, he already showed you who he is. So the enemy has already shown us who he is. Why do we keep going back to what seems to be what we're hoping is going to be a change, what we're hoping is going to provide comfort for us, but, but all it is, is really provide is familiarity. And it's easier to be, it's easier to uh, coexist with something that's familiar than it is to be by yourself. Unless you've got Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So when we're talking about this change, when we're talking about this mindset, remember a few weeks ago, we read in, in, uh, in, in uh, I believe it was Mark, Jesus says, come unto me all ye that labor, heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. 
And when we looked at that, it took us back to Genesis. In the beginning, Jesus created the man, the woman. He set them in the garden. And then in the fourth chapter of Genesis, after they had violated the command to not touch the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the words out of God's mouth was, behold, they have become as we are. They become as we are. But wait a minute, that should not take us, catch us by surprise because when he created them, he created them in his image and in his likeness. So when God created man, when God created you, he created you to have access, but he created you to have access to what he has made available on his terms and not yours. Okay? So check this out. If we, if we look at, for instance, um, need Siri talking to me. I don't talk to Siri. No. <laughs> when we look at uh, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, what does it say? It says that if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Old things are what? And behold, all things are what? Okay. And all things are what? And all things are of God, okay? So if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, all things have become new, and all things are of God. So the Lord is leading us and taking us on a pathway that will lead us back to him. Again, remember, he has given us access, access. And the only way that we can live this life is understand that there are some things that we need to get rid of. There are some things that we need to let go of. So in this, in this, 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 this struggle, we're talking about that, that head space, that we've learned some lessons. And the lessons that we have learned, let me just read this for you. These lessons that have learned that they've caused us to develop defense mechanisms and strategies that at the same time seem to be advantageous and served us well in the moment. But at the same time, they altered our character in a way that made us let lightly to be in agreement with the Spirit of God that we now desire to indwell us. Having this understanding and the desire to be like him, we must now make a conscious decision to separate ourselves from those things which are not like God. Those things which we have become accustomed to leaning on to get us through the challenging and difficult moments in our lives, only to find ourselves in the same place that we began in the same rut and worn path that leads to nowhere, where everything is familiar and the, the comfort that it brings only lasts long enough for us to catch our breath and realize that there has got to be a better way. But why does it seem, why does it seem, why does it seem as though the blessings of God and this, this place of peace, this place of rest, why does it seem that that seems to evade us just when we have it right in sight, have it in arm's reach? And I believe the reason for that is, as I have already said, letting go of what you have become. Letting go of what you have become. Is there anybody in the room that has never used the phrase, that's just who I am? No. Because that's the human way. But let's be mindful today, saints, that we are children of the Most High God. We are a royal priesthood. We are a peculiar people. 
And our responses, amen, cannot be Adamic, amen. Our, our responses, no, cannot be like Adam, you know, no, uh, there was that woman that you gave me, uh, you know, no, no, no. No, no, our responses, amen, can't be like, like Adam, amen, uh, I'm, uh, we, we were naked, so we, we covered ourselves. And the Lord said, well, who told you you were naked? I never told you anything about nakedness. I created you just like you, just, you're okay, you're good like you are. So God wants to get us back to that place, amen, where we recognize that we are the that we are the products of the faith of Jesus Christ who loved us. Or maybe I should say who loves us. And because of that, we can live this life. And guess what? I want to share this next thing with you. Uh, do me a favor if you go to 1 Samuel chapter 10. It doesn't take a lifetime to get there. It doesn't take a lifetime to get there. And I believe that every single one of us that are in this room right now, even as we have already experienced the move of the Spirit in this place, amen, that was totally unexpected, unscripted, and unrehearsed. Thank you, Lord. But it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And we welcome the Lord to do that for us each and every time we come into the sanctuary. But let me share this with you. 1 Samuel chapter 10, beginning the first verse. Look at this. He said, then Samuel took a vial of oil. And poured it upon his head, that's the head of Saul, and, and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? Okay? The Lord this morning has anointed us. He has, he has blessed us with his presence. And he has said that he, even as Samuel said to Saul, that God has has appointed you, he has anointed you to be the captain over his inheritance. God has called you. Amen. What did he say to Adam? He says, I need you to be fruitful and multiply. I need you to manage that which I have created. Amen. Amen. And so I say to you all this morning, God has given us the task Amen. He has given us the task. We are the amb ambassadors of the kingdom of God. We are the ambassadors of Christ. And being the ambassadors of Christ, he has given us the authority, amen, over everything that he has created. He says that I have given unto you the keys of the kingdom, that whatsoever you dying on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. God has given to us the keys of the kingdom. Amen. As I was looking around this morning, as I was looking around this morning, I didn't see Elder Tim. Amen. And uh, and Sister Beverly was in the was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Amen. And I was trying to ask her, amen, where is Elder Tim? And no sooner than I said, where is Elder Tim? He backed out of the office. Now, I don't take that as a coincidence. Because again, it helps me to illustrate what I'm saying to you all this morning. Amen. God has given us, oh glory to God, look at this. Amen. In the, I believe it's in the book of Deuteronomy. He says that he has given to us the power. Amen. The power of death and life are in the tongue. Amen. Instead of, con instead of cursing our situations, amen, and condemning everything that, that appears to go wrong, amen, look at, look at the next thing that happens, amen, that does not appear to be in your favor and say, I declare what the, what the enemy meant for evil, God means it for good. Thank you, Lord. 
Amen. It's all about changing our environment. Amen. If we want to live, 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 live. We, we, we've, got to, we've got to change the environment. We've got to change the thinking. We've got to change. Amen. And oh, glory to God. Don't, don't continue to, don't, don't do as Deacon Antoine, amen, so eloquently said, amen, and, and crafted it on a T-shirt. Don't allow people, places, or things to rent space in your head. Can't afford it. Life is too short. You're going to miss out on something, amen, because everything is not a problem. Some problems are meant to be, oh, wait a minute. All problems are meant to be solved. That's why there are problems. So solve it. And what you can't solve, you give to God. All right, I'm not done. I just got sidetracked. Go to verse 2, because I need you to see this. So he says, when you are departed from me today, when, then you shall find two men by Rachel's sepulcher in the border of Benjamin at Zelzah, and they will say unto thee, the asses which thou wentest to seek are found, and lo, thy father had left the care of the asses and sorrowed for you, saying, what shall I do for my son? Pause there for a second. Amen. Look at this. God will take you on a journey. Amen. God will take you on a journey that, that seemingly has nothing to do with his direction in your life or his calling for your life. But along the way, he will, he will put, he will put breadcrumbs along the way. He will send people. And so as this story began, Saul started out, he left his father because the asses had gone astray. And so he went out looking for them. He went out looking for the beasts of burden. He, he went out looking. This, this had nothing to do with, quote, unquote, God's work, so he thought. But it ultimately led him to the prophet when he could not find them. And he says, if we can find a man of God to tell us where we must go. Amen. See, you cannot ever forget, amen, that God has a word for you. If you've been saved by faith, you're going to live by faith. And when things get hard, you need to find the man, the woman, the word of God and turn to it for your direction. So when he went to ask about where he might find the asses that had left his father's uh, land, the prophet said to him, I need you to rest here overnight. Now let me just throw this in as a sidebar. When he was going to, to Samuel, before he went, he said to a servant, he said, we don't have anything to give him. That's why it's important that when you come to worship that you come with a gift. He said, we have nothing to give. And the servant said, well, we do have this. And he had a little something, something that he gave to Saul to share with the prophet. Okay? That's just a sidebar. But keep that in mind because that's important for living. Amen. That's important for living. That's important for living because there are those that say, you know, I can't afford to tithe. No, you can't afford not to tithe. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank God for a certain individual that's sitting in the room right now, amen, that has already given. I got a notice on my phone that this individual has already given an offering this morning, amen, even before the offering time has come. That's a giver. That's a person whose life is blessed. And I know for a fact that this individual's life is blessed because I see the blessings of the Lord upon them. Thank you, Lord. All right? So he says, when you leave, when you leave from here, you're going you're gonna to see these, these, uh, these men, and they're going to they're gonna tell you that your father is worried about you. He's concerned about you. 
All right? If you continue to trust God, God will send everything that you have need of knowing when you have need of knowing. And what does that mean? That means that you need to stop worrying. If you're going to worry, then don't pray. But if you're going to pray, then don't worry. You can't have it both ways. Why? Because a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Thank you, Lord. All right, verse 3. Then shalt thou go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet the three men going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids and another carrying three loads of bread and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread. Remember, he didn't have anything. He had run out of everything. Amen. And he's far from home. Amen. Don't worry about it. God's going to supply your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, uh, um, which thou shalt receive of their hands. And after that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabret and a pipe and a harp before them. Amen. Stay in the company of those who praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Stay in the company of those who worship the Lord. Look for the worship experience as often as you can. Amen. I can't express it enough. One day a week for, for 90 minutes is not going to get it. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I thank God for the day. I feel good in my sanctified soul. All right, but look at verse 6. This is where I want you to draw your attention. And the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. See, it doesn't take a lifetime to get where God has you to be. But you've got to first let go of what you've become so that you can become what it is that God has called you to be. When, when Saul had exhausted all of his resources and he had nowhere else to turn, he, he did not want to go back home without saying to his father, I found, amen, the asses and I brought them back home. But when he had... I had lost all of his reason. He was at his wit's end. He found himself a man of God. And he went and he spoke to the prophet and expressed what his concerns are. The prophet was able to redirect his attention. See, if you go to the word of God, amen, in faith, and you ask God to speak to you, he will redirect your attention, amen, and he will help you to see yourself in his word, amen. And that's why he tells us that when we look into the perfect law of liberty, that we should not leave the same way that we come. Oh, bless the name of God. And if you believe the Lord today, he says that I'll turn you into another man, another woman, another person. Amen. I'll, I'll change your heart. I'll change your mind. I'll change your perspective on life. I'll change the way you see things. I change the way you interact with people. I change the, oh, glory to God. Ah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But first and foremost, you've got to want to live this life. Thank you, Lord. And if you have it in your mind that you want to live this life, thank you, Lord. It's good to be alive, but it's better to live. Thank you, Lord. Saints, we going home, or wherever we gonna go, so that we can be back here on time. 
I need you to agree with me today. As I've already indicated, God is going to reinvent. We're celebrating 100 years, the second hundred. requires a new vision. The second hundred. And as you've heard and as you'll even see on this, this week and throughout, maybe even throughout the remaining of this year as we share individuals who have worked in ministry, but especially on today and on the next Saturday. Those, they're, they're gone on. We're standing on their shoulders. But we cannot turn to them for direction. We cannot lean on even uh, the, the teachings of them. Next week, uh, I've invited uh, Evangelist Roberts uh, Dami to come and to share with me, we're going to share together because we were having a conversation one day of how important it is for us as a church, the body of Christ. And when you stop and you say, you got only, we've got so many generations that exist in the world today. You know, we got the, you know, the, the, the baby boomers, that's, you know, me and and then Sister Pat, and you know, we, you know, hey, you know, we the boomers, you know, and we 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 living long and strong and everything, but we can't keep up with the millennials and the and the Gen Zs and the the Gen X and you know, I got all these Gens, and I'm like, what do they what do they all mean? But as again, my deacon, my deacon, my deacon, I love this man. He says we got to meet them where they are. And in order to do that, we have to, have a, we have to have a strategy or a mindset to bridge generations because we can't leave anybody out. The Lord says that the harvest is plenteous. Amen. But guess what? I'm not going to find that many 72-year-old people that need to come to Christ. Now, 17, 27, 37, 42, 52. But they're all in different places. And so even as we stood up here today in different places, thank you, Lord, a teenager, a teenager on the drums, amen, a new pop. On, on the keys. Yeah, y'all. So I, got my, I, got my, I got my desire. Savannah Grace, didn't, she didn't come on Thursday. She came on Tuesday. Amen. See, some folks say God may not come when he wants, but he's always on time. Amen. He blessed me early. Amen. When I saw that beautiful little baby and mama, amen, picture that he sent, my, my heart was just so glad for you, man, like it was my own grandbaby. Okay. Amen. And 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 you and you see how that the spirit of the Lord just moved. So we got we had a teenager. We we had a a, a a a new a new pop. Amen. 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 Then and then we had a a, a mother. Amen. And, and a wife. Amen. With 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 children. Amen. And then we had then we had a sister Jackie. Amen. A a, a single. Uh, woman, amen. And then we, then we had a, a grandpop, amen. Oh, mama, you know, all these gif, different, gif, but God spoke to us all the same way. So that we could effectively minister to all of you. God did that. And that's what he wants to do with the ministry. We are going to grow. We're going to grow. We're going to have an explosion, amen, that these chairs that we see down right now, amen, is not going to be just for special occasions. No, that's going to be our need. Oh, 
Amen. It's going to be necessary. Amen. For that balcony. Amen. To be prepared to receive. Amen. I was looking at a video. Amen. That, that uh, my, my dad, the, the construction video, when he was walking around and when he walked through the door, he said, this is the sanctuary and uh, uh, it's going to hold about 647 people. <laughs> you know? So, hey, those 647, he always said, he says, I'm building it for the people. So in this 18th year, this 18th year of the existence of this building, get ready. Get ready. It's up to you. It's up to us to carry this vision forward. So, Father, we thank you. We praise you, dear Lord God, how that you have blessed us. Thank you, God, for your presence on today. Thank you, Lord, for the outpouring of your spirit, oh God, the power of your anointing. Thank you, Lord God, for all, all that you've done and all that you're going to do, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, we give you praise and thanksgiving. We glorify you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, as we pray, God, I thank you for these that are in the sanctuary right now. Lord, I pray for health and healing. Oh, God, look on my sister Shirley today, God. Touch her body. Look on my brother. Oh, God, touch him today, Lord. Take away that sciatic pain, oh, Lord God, that he is dealing with, Lord God. You touch him and bless him, God. Father, I thank you, Lord, for taking Annette back home safely, Lord God. I thank you for Myrtle and Curly, oh God, that are, that are both here as well, oh God. And thank you for blessing them and touching their bodies, oh Lord. Thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. God, and I praise you today, God, for all that is before us. Lord, I thank you, Father, because I know that you have a greater blessing in store for us. Help us, dear Lord God, to submit to you, to surrender our will. Lord God, I lift up Elder Bennett before you today, God. Touch our brother today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, we know that you alone are able. Yes, God. Ah, yeah. Glory, glory. Wonderful Savior today. Mighty God you are. Mighty God, mighty God. Lord, you do it for us, and we know that it shall be done. It will be done. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And God, I pray that if there's anyone in the room right now, anyone, oh God, that has a special need, Lord God, I thank you for meeting that need today. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for healing that situation. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, you do it, Lord. And, Father, we be careful to give you the praise. The honor and the thanksgiving, God, belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's about letting everyone know there is a God. The Bible says that the fool